И переходим мы до доповеди Робин Сардхаус. Робин – керевник проекта Library Services Consulting. И она также радник Аризона, Университета Аризоны и Сайстартер. Она проживает в Кингстоне, Вашингтон, Соединенные Штаты Америки. Робин Сардхаус. And now I'm going to pass it to my friend and colleague, Robin. I was actually involved in the pilot program in 2017. And since then, this project has really grown and um, met the needs of the libraries we work with. So in a little over a year ago, um, as part of this project and grant, a group of us formed what is called the National Citizen and Community Science Library Network. And I support, help support that. And what we're trying to do with this subgroup of the grant is to build the capacity of citizen uh, libraries as hubs for citizen science. We also are supporting that community of libraries by holding webinars, producing a bi-monthly newsletter. We have a... Um, email address questions can be sent to. We've recently in the last few months opened a Facebook page um, by that same name. So again, you're welcome to join that. And we wanna make sure um, we broaden participation of the different communities Darlene mentioned. And you know, libraries in the United States, public libraries cannot bar people from entering. So whether you're traveling through or you know, no matter what your socioeconomic um, situation is, you are always welcome in our public libraries. So we really want to have the availability to reach out to everyone, whether it's an adult, somebody um, that just has special needs in health or learning, that we're there to support them. And in the end, all of this participation by those groups will help shape and accelerate scientific research. So, you know, we invite you to join our library network where you'll then receive those emails. You'll also be invited to the upcoming webinars that we'll um, have and also access to all the free information on the SciStarter forward slash library website. Next slide. So in order to get this whole project started, and it's something we encourage libraries to do as well, either very formally following this process that um, is called journey mapping. But what was done, and I participated with my community, is to find out um, you know, what people need um, or want to participate in. So, you know, the first thing is to make, um, create awareness in your community. So we actually had these journey mapping meetings where we invited anybody and everybody in our community, which at the time when I lived in Arizona was a town outside of Phoenix called Gilbert, Arizona. That's where this library that I worked at was located. And, um, you know, we go step by step and talk about um, the, the opportunities, the obstacles, you know, what people um, want to do, what, what their expectations are. And so from that process, we found out that in my community, um, people were really interested in light pollution um, because we had a very strong connection with a uh, amateur astronomy group. We also found out that um, pollinators, especially bees, were of concern. So by doing that, um, it helped ASU and SciStarter better understand what kits probably should be put together, what projects would best fit our community. And so um, once the kits were distributed, we went back, the ASU went back and talked to our staff at our library and the other pilot libraries. They also um, surveyed the users to find out, you know, what they liked about it. Did they have a better understanding of what citizen science is about? You know, did we have good information and materials to support their getting involved in citizen science? 
and participating in the specific project, the kit that we um, received from ASU supported. And then um, we also uh, talked about, you know, getting involved in other projects. So it was like a stepping stone from one kit, hopefully to another. And of course, all that feedback helped us iterate the needs to improve or um, add on resources, as we'll talk and you'll see in a few minutes. Um, so all of that helped form the um, program at the libraries, especially the initial uh, six pilot libraries in the Phoenix Valley area. Okay, next slide. So some of the evaluation questions that were brought up were, you know, how can the project partners engage local community groups and what's the best method to do so? So one of the things we did, especially with the light in the night project that you'll see was to actually have the project scientists participate with us in webinars and really talk about the experience um, she had. And with technology today, we, we didn't have to have her come from Tucson. We had a series of webinars that she participated in with libraries across the United States. And then how can libraries obtain the kits and what funding sources can they explore? You know, that's really important. Different libraries have different policies. So we wanted to make sure the kits were such that um, they were flexible to meet the needs of the library processes for checkouts and check-ins and maintenance. And then of course, funding. Um, size Starter ASU had some money with for pilot programs, but we've also been working with um, institutions in the United States called state libraries, and they help manage and support all the school, academic, public, um, medical libraries in their state. And in some cases, these state libraries were able to provide funding. We also have another government group called the Network of uh, National Libraries of Medicine that have been a huge funder for this project because they know the importance of citizen science to their work. So they want people to be um, comfortable uh, doing citizen science. So they'll be involved in health related research that they're doing. And um, what can, kit materials can be uh, developed to facilitate ease of use in libraries. Again, you'll see some of the materials we came up with and we're constantly improving and making changing changes to those based on feedback we get from users and the libraries who are participating. Next slide. So some of the outcomes that we can talk about today are um, that the libraries and um, their patrons or library users definitely um, related that they have an increased interest and in knowledge of citizen science. Don't assume your community knows what that term means. So, you know, that was one of the first things that had to be done was to make sure people understood what citizen science is all about. People reported they had a greater confidence in their ability to collect and interpret data. Um, a lot of people that don't have science backgrounds. So this is really great to hear back from people that by following the protocols that were laid out um, by the project and supported by SciStarter, people felt that they actually could participate in real science. And then 92% of the participants the vast majority are women who are underrepresented in STEM, exp expressed interest in checking out another citizen science kit. Very important. We don't want it to stop with one project. People um, should, and we'd love to see them participate and help in other uh, data pro gathering projects. And scientists did report a notable increase in data, um, especially the scientists I talked about with the um, light pollution, measuring light in the night. You know, she saw within a few months um, an increase in reported light measurements in the Phoenix area because the kits were being circulated. So we really had impact almost immediately after 
uh, circulating kits through the public libraries in the Phoenix metro area. Next slide. Okay, um, we can, yep. Okay, so um, the big thrust of this uh, pilot program with Arizona State University and SciStarter was to figure out kits that would help the communities and libraries um, submit scientific data. So these are some of the kits that we, um, you'll see if you go onto this website that's located here at the bottom of the screen. Everything is here from a um, piece of uh, a, a document that gives you step-by-step -step directions to build the kit with uh, instruments. Some of the kits don't have specific instruments. Um, it's been a challenge with uh, the pandemic here and supply chain getting some things, but um, luckily we found within there's good replacements or the couple of kits that require very specific tools that within um, a month or two we can get people back online with building these kits. And the kits not only suggest um, have tools that you use, but we also have bookmarks rack cards, which are little cards that libraries can use to say, hey, this kit is available. This is what it's about. Bring this rack card up to the front desk so we know which kit you want, or wow, all the kits are out. But again, come up and we can put you in a uh, waiting list to get the kit when it's available. So these are just some examples of the materials for one of the kits that we offer through libraries. And then the first thing that we really um, encourage the libraries to do is to get involved in the training that's been developed. And this is possible, again, in large part through the Network of National Libraries of Medicine, a government um, organization. So whether it's library users or their staff, we really um, encourage them to get started in Foundations of Citizen Science. You all are invited to get involved in that. Again, there's the website to find that free training. And in this um, training, you will actually be able to participate in some basic projects. If you're a library, um, the next step would be to do the libraries as hubs for citizen science. Again, we explain how and why um, with resources you can download for free to offer citizen science to your community. And then recently we, um, SciStarter created the data literacy that helps you understand what interpreting data is all about. Okay, next slide. And then once you have a better understanding of citizen science, if you're a library, how to provide it, then it's time to build a kit. So we offer a document um, to download to give you instruction on building a kit, downloading those bookmarks, flyers that I talked about. Here's an example of that um, light pollution are called measuring light in the night is the name of the kit. And um, it supports um, a, a very specific project that reports light pollution around the world, just not in the United States. And again, over to the far right, you see an example of a bookmark that shows the kit, explains what the project does. We also have flyers. Public libraries lots of times do outreach, so these flyers are great to take to festivals or school visits or even put on their library shelves in specific areas to let people know that they're involved in citizen science and how you know to get involved with it themselves. Next slide. Here's some other ideas of how a library or organization can get involved in citizen science. Um, over in the far left, we actually had a couple citizen science projects on site at the library I worked at. This um, in the very back of this. Um, building, there's a little white dot that's actually called a purple air um, instrument that has real time uh, air quality measurements. The sign in the front talks about it, shows how to get the data and actually invites uh, the person to come into the library and learn more about what citizen science projects are available through the library. A library can start off with a simple book discussion. Of course, we recommend um, a book Darlene's a co-author with um, 
called the Field Guide to Citizen Science that shows um, month by month or other um, times different projects you can participate in. Um, this group I've, I'm involved with has actually developed facilitation tools. So we have slides you can download, again, all free to explain to your community or your staff what citizen science is about and how to get involved. This bottom center picture shows that astronomy group I talked about. Um, they regularly did presentations at our library. It was a great way for me to kind of do a commercial and say, okay, now that you know more about astronomy, why don't you get involved in this research project? There's a kit ready for you to check out. If you're not familiar with it, another project that's really fun and is more um, engaging for a group of people is called a BioBlitz, where everybody goes out in a certain area dur during a specific time and takes photos of plants, reptiles, fungus, animals, trees, um, anything that's natural and living in that area and uploads it to an app called <clears throat> iNaturalist which is a cloud database scientists can use for their research. And finally, your webpage can be an amazing way to promote um, citizen science, talking about the kits and programs your library support. Next slide. Okay, I think that we we will have, I think you, you already have- Over, okay. The last part, yeah. Okay. No, no, Absolutely. you can finish, but we, we, we yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So basically we just wanna get use the, the partnerships and strengths of the community to support citizen science, make sure materials are open source, make sure that you can find those resources through catalogs or just promotion through the bookmarks flyers in the um, library. Make sure you use those professionals, whether it's the project scientists or other subject experts that can support the project, make improvements as needed and encourage everybody to become that hub for citizen science. So thank you very much, Robin. I think we are going to welcome our last lecturer.